So let's do a couple of example problems here for things that we might find um, in this chapter. So let's look at Drosophila again for eye color. Remember our notation here, we're going to note that they are on the X chromosome. Um, the Y chromosome does not get an allele because there's no homolog for eye color on the Y chromosome. We are going to denote red eye or the normal by W plus. So this is normal, which is red eye. And we are going to denote the mutant or the white eye by just a W for white. Oops, mutant. All right, so we have a heterozygous red-eyed female. So her genotype is going to be XW plus XW. We're gonna cross her with a red-eyed male. So remember he has only one X chromosome and then he has a Y with no allele. So what are the genotypes of the parents? We've got them written there. And now phenotypes of the offspring. So let's go ahead and make our cross. So we'll just do a Punnett square as usual. So this first box here, that's gonna produce a red-eyed female. So we've got red-eyed female. On the right, we've got another red-eyed female. And then down here, we've got a red-eyed male and a white-eyed male. So how many are white-eyed males? So 50, there's two different ways you can answer this question. You have to be very careful on um, what the question is as actually asking. In general, uh, when you are talking about sex length, you need to indicate um, the differences between males and females. So um, of the males, one quarter of males are going to be white, I'm sorry, one half, excuse me, that's the exact problem there, one half of the males are going to be white-eyed. There are going to be no red, sorry, no white-eyed females. Let me get my stuff straight. No white-eyed females. Half of the males are going to be red-eyed, and all of the females are going to be red-eyed. Now, <clears throat> you can say this slightly differently. You can say a quarter of the offspring are going to be white-eyed males. And we see that here if we look at the big, the whole Punnett square, a quarter of the offspring are white-eyed males. But you have to make sure that you are indicating male versus female here. So in general, when I ask for the phenotypes here, I want you to indicate male or female. So we are going to be two red-eyed females to one red-eyed male to one white-eyed male. If I ask you for phenotypes, male and female falls within that phenotype. So if you simply say, you are going to have three red eye male, three red eyes to one white eye. That is incorrect because since it's sex linked, you have to also indicate the sex of the offspring. All right, so in a cross between fruit flies, we are not going to get four offspring. We are going to get many, many offspring. So in the cross above, 100 males are produced and 200 females. How many total red-eyed flies will there be? So all of the females are going to be red-eyed and half of the males are going to be red-eyed. So all the females, half the males. So 250, 250 flies will be red-eyed. So now look, let's look at another example using another sex-linked trait. This is for the calico cat coloring. So this trait is co-dominant. It, um, we talked about it at the end of the chapter. This is actually one that occurs on the um, X-linked um, 
I'm sorry, it is an X-linked gene, but it is one that is commonly affected by the inactivation of one of the X chromosomes. Um, but we can still relate this to genotype. All right, so females can receive a B or an R gene. Now this means that they either uh, produce black or orange splotches. Um, the calico colored cats are the ones that are showing black and orange. Otherwise, um, and so if they receive both alleles, the B and the R, they're gonna produce both colors. Otherwise, they are black or orange. So uh, because males only get one copy of the color gene, they are either black or orange. They can never be calico cats. So if we look at a heterozygous calico female, let's cross her with a black male. So calico female, a black male would have the B allele. So when we do that, XBXR, we've got a black female cat, we've got a calico female, we've got a black male, and an orange male. All right, so what percentage of the kittens will be black and male? So one quarter or 25% are going to be black, oops, that's this one, black males. What percentage are going to be calico and male? So now we said in the problem, they're never calico, but you can look at the genotypes and also verify that there are no calico males. So 0% of the males or, or kittens are gonna be male calicos. And then what percentage are gonna be calico and female? This is going to be this one here. So 25% of the offspring are going to be calico females. If we're writing out the ratios, we've got one to one, to one to one. Uh, we've got a one to one to one to one on genotype as well. So in a second cross, let's cross a female black cat with a male orange cat. So um, because this is a co-dominant situation, the only way we get black is if we're homozygous. So a black female with an orange male. So this one we've got two calico females so in other words all the females are going to be calico and we've got two black males so there are only two phenotypes you can get from this cross you can either get female calicos or black males. We're also going to be uh, two to two or one to one on the genotypes. We only have two different genotypes there. So what percentage of the kittens will be calico and female? All of them, 100% of them, I'm sorry, 100% of the females will be calico, but of all the kittens, 50% of the kittens are gonna be calico and female. And what color will all the male cats be? They will all be black. So I got tripped up on my own questions here. Make sure that you are ask, answering the question that is being asked. And this is more important now because we have to distinguish between males and females. So now let's look at a pedigree and let's work through um, a couple of questions associated with this pedigree. So for this pedigree, we have um, a set of questions. This is actually number 11 in your textbook, and there are three parts to this. So we're gonna work through this one at a time. So anytime you get a pedigree, you are going to need to tell me the inheritance pattern. 
So in the last chapter, or in chapter eight, we did chapter eight already, um, when we were looking at pedigrees, you basically had to determine if it was dominant or recessive. Now you have to tell me, is it dominant or recessive? And is it sex linked or autosomal? So you have to tell me those two things. Is it on a sex chromosome and is it dominant or recessive? So remember that anytime you have two unaffected parents producing an affected child, that is going to be recessive. Um, if you look, we see that here as well, two unaffected parents producing an affected child. For the dominant phenotype, every affected child has an affected parent. So let's say that this individual was affected and this individual was affected. We have an affected child who has an affected parent who had an affected parent. So it's not enough to say that it occurs in every generation because it actually can occur in every generation being recessive. But you have to look at which children have affected parents. And when you have um, an affected child with an affected parent, and that happens every single time, it's likely that it is going to be dominant. Uh, another indication of dominance is if you have two affected parents and both affected and unaffected children. That's another indication of dominance. So we have decided that this is a recessive trait because two unaffected parents produce an affected child. So that's the first thing. The second thing is going to be de to determine if this is an X-linked trait. In an X-linked trait, um, if it is an X-linked recessive, you're gonna have far more males affected than females. Uh, so here we actually have all males affected, only males are affected and there are no females. So that's a strong indication that it is an X-linked trait. Um, in an X-linked dominant trait, um, it's a little bit harder to figure out. Um, in an X-linked dominant, fathers always pass their trait on to their daughters. So if this was an X-linked dominant, this father would pass his allele to both of his daughters. And then the mother could pass to either child. So X-linked dominant gets a little bit tricky, a little bit harder to figure out. But this is a recessive and this is an X-linked trait because we see that the majority of the individuals are male. All right, so could this inheritance pattern occur if the trait were autosomal? So um, the answer is yes, it could, but it's very unlikely. So we see the unaffected parents with an affected child. That can happen in an autosomal trait, but it is very unlikely that none of them would be females. So uh, we would have to assume that by chance, I actually don't really even know what we have to assume. Uh, basically that just the very unlikely chance that no females happen to get this gene. All right, could this inheritance pattern occur if the trait were X-linked but dominant? The answer is no, because if this was X-linked dominant, dad would have to pass that on to his daughters. So if it were dominant, all of his daughters would have to be affected. So this actually could not, this pattern could not occur in an X-linked dominant. It has to be recessive. So all of these guys are going to be X-linked recessive. That means that all of their mothers are carriers. Now there's two different ways to indicate carriers. You can put a dot in the center or you can shade half. That's indicate a carrier. So she is going to be a carrier because she's the only one that can pass on that trait to their son. 
dad is unaffected and only has one allele, so he cannot pass it on. So all of these unaffected males are going to be hemizygous dominant. Remember that phrase. It means there's one X chromosome. There's one gene. Um, all of these females with affected sons then have to be heterozygous. Now, um, these women that have married in, um, you kind of just have to assume that it is that they aren't carrying it. A lot of these X-linked traits are uh, low in frequency. Um, from here, she does not pass anything on to her son. That doesn't mean she doesn't have the trait, but she's likely to be homozygous. Um, dad's going to be hemizygous for a dominant. This female would probably then be uh, homozygous. And you don't know for sure that she doesn't have it unless she has a son, and then you know for sure that she does because she could also be a carrier and the son just not have it. So uh, also a carrier female, also a carrier female. So that means that from this couple, um, She is probably also the carrier. She has gotten this allele from someone. So let's look at part C. Calculate the probability that their first son would be affected by the trait. So individual three, one, so that's this person here. So what is the probability that she will be affected by the trait? So her dad, I'm sorry, that her son, not her, her son will be affected by the trait. So let's see, X, B, X, B. So she's likely to not have it because she is from outside the family. But let's redraw individual one, three. Let's redraw her little part of the tree down here. So dad has it. This is her. Uh, and she's going to marry a, an individual and have a son. So we're looking for the probability that this individual has the trait. So we aren't told that this dad has it. So we're gonna assume not because we're gonna assume that this is a, a fairly uncommon trait. But what are the chances of this boy here having it? So the chance of dad passing that allele onto his daughter is 100%. So um, he has to pass that on. So she has to be a heterozygous individual here. So this, the chance is one there. The chance of that son being affected Oh goodness, I get the right alleles here. There we go. The chance of this son being affected is going to be one quarter um, out of all the offspring. But we know that it is a son, or we're assuming it is a son, so 50% of the sons are going to be affected. So there's a 50% chance this son is affected. So 50%. So let's now look at individual three, five. So that is this person. So what is the chance that her son is affected? So we know that her brother is affected, which means since her father was not, her mom had to be a carrier. So now we need to figure out if her parents are unaffected, but mom is a carrier. We need to figure out the chance that she's going to be a carrier and that her son will get it. So the chance that she is going to be a carrier 
is going to be 50% because 50% of the females from this cross are gonna be carriers. So the chance that she's a carrier is one half. And then if she is a carrier and dad is normal, this is actually the same cross that's happening here, so I'm just gonna use that one. Let me just change the color. If she's a carrier and dad is normal, there is a 50% chance that a son is going to be affected. So our total chance is going to be one half times one half. So there is a 24, 24, 25 percent chance that they are going to have an affected son. Now let, let's look over here at individual three nine. That's this one. Um, neither of the parents are affected. Um, so it's pretty safe to say that uh, she does not have the allele. Um, and as long as she doesn't marry somebody who's affected, their son is probably not going to be affected. So there's really about a 0% chance that their son is, if she marries someone, that their son would have a child, I'm sorry, that their son would be affected by this disease. Um, even if dad was affected, a son would not be affected because he's not passing on his traits to his son. All right, so last one, um, individual 10. Let's say that individual 10 marries somebody. What is the chance that their child will be affected? So just like in the last one, Dad is affected, but mom probably isn't because again, this is rare. So she's probably not affected, uh, probably not carrying the allele. So basically there's a 0% chance that their son is going to be affected. If, however, this mom here is a carrier, uh, there's still a 50% chance that the son is affected, okay? So um, it depends on if mom's a carrier or not, but because it's rare, it's pretty unlikely that she's gonna have the allele, so we'll also say that this one is 0% chance of being affected.